Did you know that each of the four gas giant planets has asteroid rings? Yes, the four gas giants have rings, with Saturn's being the most vibrant, but why do only these planets have rings? Why do rocky planets not possess? What would occur if the Earth had rings similar to Saturn's? Let's investigate. Hello everyone, welcome back to Z, subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to receive our daily videos. Why do Saturn have rings? Before inquiring why the Earth does not have beautiful, multicolored asteroid rings like Saturn's, we must first determine why Saturn has asteroid rings. Since the invention of the telescope in the 17th century, astronomers have explored the universe and uncovered its most profound mysteries. The planet Saturn and its well-known belt of asteroids has long fascinated scientists. In 1655, the Dutch astronomer Christian Huygens observed Saturn's rings for the first time. Huygens was able to identify Saturn's principal ring with a rudimentary telescope. However, it was not known at the time that it was a ring, it was thought to be two large moons orbiting the planet at the time. In 1850, British astronomer James Clerk Maxwell proposed that the planet's rings are composed of a series of minuscule particles orbiting the planet. The correct comprehension of how Saturn's asteroid ring formed, however, did not emerge until much later. NASA and Soviet Union space missions began investigating the solar system in the 1960s, focusing on the giant planets. Pioneer 11 was the first spacecraft to reach Saturn in 1979 and was able to capture comprehensive images of its rings. These images disclose that Saturn's asteroid ring is composed of numerous minute particles, ranging from dust to boulders the size of houses. However, the query was how this ring was formed. Saturn's asteroid ring is believed to have formed from a moon orbiting the planet that was composed of ice material. This moon, known as the parent moon, would have been destroyed by Saturn's gravity roughly a billion years ago, causing it to shatter into millions of minuscule fragments still orbiting the planet. It is believed that the parent moon was an icy moon akin to Saturn's moons Enceladus or Mimas. These moons are predominantly composed of water, ice, and rock, rendering them relatively lightweight. The parent moon's orbit around Saturn would have been unstable due to gravitational interaction with the planet's other moons until it was annihilated by Saturn's gravity. The resulting fragments were eventually left in a secure orbit around Saturn. Over time, these fragments collided and fragmented into ever smaller particles, eventually forming the asteroid ring we observe today. Scientists believe that the majority of the ring is composed of water ice particles, with minor amounts of rock and dust. Although we now grasp how Saturn's asteroid ring formed, many scientists are still attempting to comprehend it. For instance, why do various portions of a ring have different thicknesses and densities? Why do some rings have such distinguishing characteristics, such as the Cassini Gap? The Cassini Gap is one of Saturn's asteroid ring's most distinctive features. This gap is a relatively vacant region of the ring that is thought to have been created by Saturn's largest moon Titan's gravitational pull. Titan is believed to exert a substantial gravitational force on the ring particles, displacing them and producing a visible void devoid of rock and ice fragments. Unobservable rings. Although Saturn's asteroid rings are the most colorful in the solar system, Jupiter, Uranus, and Neptune all have rings, so why aren't these visible with the unaided eye? There are numerous reasons why it is impossible to observe the asteroid belts of Jupiter, Uranus, and Neptune from Earth. First, these planets' asteroid rings are much fainter and less dense than Saturn's ring. Second, these planets' rings are closer to the planet's surface, making them harder to distinguish from the planet's background. 
In addition, the majority of telescopes used by amateur and professional astronomers are insufficient to distinguish the asteroid rings of these planets from other celestial objects. The asteroid rings of these planets have been studied with more sophisticated telescopes, such as the Hubble Space Telescope, however, even with these tools, the rings are difficult to detect and require careful image processing. Another reason why Jupiter, Uranus, and Neptune's asteroid rings cannot be seen from Earth is that these planets have dense atmospheres that distort light reaching Earth, making it even more difficult to see. The origin and composition of the rings of Jupiter, Uranus, and Neptune may be the most important reason why they are not visible from Earth. Saturn's rings were formed by the disintegration of an icy moon that produced ice-rich rings, whereas the rings of the other three gas giants were formed by gravitational capture. Gravitational capture is the process by which a planet captures an object with its gravity and anchors it to it, causing this new object to become a moon or an asteroid ring. This means that for billions of years, the three gas giants captured asteroids and comets that passed nearby, gradually forming their rings. Due to this, the rings of Jupiter, Uranus, and Neptune are not as dense and brilliant as those of Saturn, furthermore, many of the asteroids that form the rings of Jupiter, Uranus, and Neptune are dark, making them even more difficult to see. If the Earth had a ring similar to those of the three gas giants, it would likely be difficult to see even from Earth. Why the Earth doesn't have rings? In spite of this, the gravitational influence of the four rocky planets is the primary reason they lack rings. As the gas giants have a great deal of mass, their gravitational force of attraction is tremendous. As a result, all the asteroids, comets, and other bodies that orbit near to them are captured by gravity, and the rings gradually form. However, Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars lack sufficient mass to retain an asteroid orbit, making it difficult for them to do so. The solar system snow line is an additional vital factor to consider. The snow line is an imaginary line in the solar system that separates regions where solid substances freeze and create water ice from regions where these substances evaporate and remain gaseous. The location of the snow line varies based on the sun's distance, the local pressure, and the temperature. Nonetheless, it is typically located in the region between Mars and Jupiter, also known as the asteroid belt. In the inner solar system, the snow line is approximately five astronomical units away from the Sun. This implies that stony planets, like Earth, formed from rocky and metallic materials that did not freeze at this distance. These planets are composed primarily of silicates and metals. Temperature and pressure are low enough in the outer region of the solar system, beyond the snow line, for water and other volatiles to solidify into ice. This indicates that the giant planets, such as Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, have solid centers composed of ice and rock and atmospheres composed primarily of hydrogen, helium, and methane. The majesty of Saturn's rings has endured to the present day because they are beyond the frost line. If they were at the same distance as Earth, they would have evaporated completely by now due to their ice composition if they were at the same distance. This means that if the Earth had an asteroid ring similar to Saturn's, it would evaporate rapidly due to its proximity to the Sun, thereby diminishing the pleasure of having rings. What would happen if, instead of rings like Saturn's, the Earth had rings composed of minerals and dust like Jupiter, Uranus, or Neptune? As previously mentioned, the ring would be extremely dark and difficult to observe with the unaided eye. To be sufficiently visible, it would require a large number of asteroid fragments, which could only be obtained by destroying the moon. Roche Limit The formation of Saturn's rings occurred when one of its moons exceeded the Roche Limit, but what is the Roche Limit? The Roche Limit is the minimum distance at which an object can approach another without being annihilated by gravitational tides. This distance is essential for the study of planetary systems and applies to natural satellites, planetary rings, and comets. The Roche limit is the region surrounding a planet where the gravitational pull is so strong that if an object crosses it without sufficient speed, it will be shattered. Once the natural satellite that formed Saturn's rings reached the Roche limit, it was unable to escape and was destroyed, 
producing the rings we see today. In the case of Earth, the Moon is very far from the Roche limit, and we also know that it travels away from Earth at a rate of 3 centimeters per year, so it is certain that it will never form a ring of asteroids around our planet. But what if, instead of the Moon, it was an asteroid that would exceed the Earth's Roche limit? Suppose a massive asteroid, such as Apophis, comes so close to the Earth that it exceeds the Roche limit and is destroyed by the planet's gravity, transforming it into a ring of asteroids. What impact would something like this have on the planet? A spectacular view of an asteroid ring would be possible from any location on Earth, particularly at night. A ring of asteroids encircling the Earth would inspire the poetry of many poets, but it would be unsuitable for humans because it would impede the performance of many duties that presently require a clear sky. One of them is astronomical observation, all astronomers in the world would suffer from melancholy if a ring of asteroids obstructed the vision of all telescopes and observatories by reflecting too much sunlight. On the other hand, all communications and duties involving artificial satellites would be compromised due to the fact that a large number of artificial satellites would share space with the asteroid ring. Moreover, an asteroid ring would jeopardize the future of space exploration, as spacecraft would have to perform complex maneuvers to avoid asteroids while attempting to escape Earth's gravitation. And ultimately, the worst aspect of having an asteroid ring is that Earth's gravity would pull in the majority of the asteroids, causing them to descend on the surface periodically and decimate all life on Earth. Despite the fact that they are aesthetically pleasing and put on quite a display, our planet would be much better off without an asteroid ring. But do not let this depress you. A natural asteroid ring may not be possible or necessary for Earth, but what about an artificial ring created by human science and technology? This would be significantly more probable, and unlike an asteroid ring, an artificial ring would be beneficial to humanity. Would you like us to produce a video depicting what would occur if the Earth had an artificial ring? Share your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like, share and subscribe.